Hi, I'm Maggie. I'm Ella. And this is episode five of Game Day Girls. Going in to the matchup, Lions versus Cowboys, NFC match of the week. The Lions played really, really well, 47-9. Jared Goff played uh, really, really well. He threw for uh, 315 yards, three touchdowns. The running back room, you know, did some damage this week. I think they played over Ella. Yeah, I think obviously the biggest concern now is where do you move on from the Aiden Hutchinson injury? That's a huge loss. You know, to your defense, to your whole entire team, you know, he's such a great leader for them. So it's how do does the player step up for him and, you know, the defense. You know, they, they got a big test next week against the Vikings. So yeah. how will they continue to keep what they're doing? You know, they only give up nine points. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I expect to see both the Vikings and the Lions um, in the NFC Championship game, in my opinion. I think next week will be, you know, a pretty good test to determine – where both these teams are at and what they need to improve on to maybe make that Super Bowl run and bring home a Lombardi trophy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about the NFC Championship, but I think I'm, I'm leaning more towards Lions for the NFC Championship. I don't know about the Vikings, so we'll see about them. We'll see. Um, but going into Bengals-Giants game, you know, that was a good game to watch. You know, kind of see the Bengals click defense-wise. I think, you know, they only give up seven points. So that's huge for them because that's what they've been missing these past couple weeks. Yeah. I think – it was huge that Joe Burrow, you know, he just came out, started with that huge 47-yard run. You know, that's why you pay him the big bucks, you know. Yeah. He's that guy for them. So, yeah. Yeah. I think overall, I mean, the Bengals are 2-4. and four. They're definitely making a comeback for their, you know, pretty big loss at the beginning of the season that will definitely, you know, hurt them later on. Yeah. But like you were just saying, like, Joe Burrow was using those legs this week, which I think was very, very, very helpful, which, you know, again, caused another deep, or defensive threat. Yeah, I mean, and then going into Steelers versus Raiders, that was a great game. I don't know if you saw, but that place was all yellow in Las Vegas. It was pretty cool to see, yeah. you know. I know Steelers have a big fan base all around, but that was just pretty cool to see. It's basically a home game for them. Yeah, overall, I think Najee Harris had a really, really good game. Uh, 14 carries on 106 yards and one yeah. touchdown, and that's probably the biggest takeaway of that game. Yeah, I mean, Justin Fields, he didn't play great, you know, but he did his job. He got the win, so – that's why I'm a little, like, confused with the Russell Wilson starting next week. You yeah. know, there's talk about it. And I just feel like, you know, the whole point is to win games. And, yeah, Justin Fields didn't have the, his greatest stat game, but, like, he's winning the games on the road. Yeah. He's doing his job. So I think it's kind of a stupid move. I mean, he's been winning you games, so I don't think they should make that move. Yeah, I think, like, bringing Russell Wilson in will just cause, you know, more drama for that team. Like, why don't you stick with the guy that's winning you games? Yeah. Especially when I think, obviously, Justin uh, Justin Fields is definitely a lot younger. Like, he has a better chance of being your future versus, He's you know, their guy. You know, he's, he's their guy. Gonna... Yeah. And Russell Wilson's probably, you know, going to retire in the next coming years. I just don't think that he deserves to get yeah. a chance to start yet. And I think, you know, it's Jet, Jet Steelers, Sunday Night Football. I think that's a, you know, we got a good defense. So, I think that's a hard test for Russell Wilson. I mean, yeah, he's a veteran. He's been in the league. But. I think, you know, him sitting out some couple games, like that's going to make him a little bit rusty. And, you know, I think it's just going to throw off their whole entire team. Um, but going into the Monday night football game, I mean, what an absolute killer that was. It was yeah. just – it wasn't even fun to watch. Like, I don't, I don't know if you saw, but it was like 22 penalties. The refs – I don't want to be like the person who's like, oh, the refs, the refs. Yeah. Both sides of the ball, they were insane. You know, even Aaron Rodgers said they called – he had the ball and like a Bills – player came and sacked him and then another Bills player came and like touched him and they called yeah. roughing the pass it was like these guys couldn't even breathe without you know them throwing the flag it was just insane it wasn't fun to watch and it was just yeah it was crazy yeah. definitely a rough game for both sides obviously I don't think the weather was great I mean a ton of missed kicks yeah. for both kickers yeah and it's absolutely killer and I know but like you're an NFL kicker like you're, you're supposed to plan for these. You know, he knew going in that it was going to be a windy game, you know, warm-ups, everything. So it's just you've got to make those kicks. They're absolutely ideal. And the holding, you know, the Jets had such a great drive in the fourth quarter. You know, they scored a touchdown. It was on third and goal. Yeah. Uh, Braylon Allen, he punched it right through. And then everyone's celebrating. Oh, wait, there's a flag on the play. You know, that would have put them 27 to 23. It's just the little things. And – I was actually pleased, though, with the play calling. They looked good. They had the explosive offense, so I'm okay with it. Um, yeah, it's a really bad loss, and you really needed that win, but I'm okay with it. The Bills are a great team, so I think the play calling was a lot better. I think firing Robert Sala kind of was the right move. The dude has been with us for – he was in his fourth season when he got fired, so I think three losing seasons, 
yeah, Zach Wilson was your quarterback, but this is the year, I think, for the Jets. So you got all this talent, and you're now 2-4. and four. You were 2-3 and three when Robert Sala got fired. But, you know, this is – he it needed to be done, and I think they looked a lot better, so. I disagree. I think Robert Sala should have stayed. I realize they did have four seasons. I think his, he had a losing record. That wasn't particularly great. But you look at the Jets, um, and overall, they're just not a good franchise. They haven't yeah. been – in a while, and I think <sighs> yeah. more than just the coach is the problem, and it has been. But I definitely agree. I think the Jets have a decent chance of being a good team. They have so much talent, and it was just hidden. Like defense wise, defense was good, okay. And yeah. that's part of it. Is Robert Sala is a defensive coach. He was I with the Forty ers when they went to the Super Bowl against the Chiefs a couple years ago. You know, he's a, he was a defensive guy, okay. But now you have offense, and I think getting Devonte Adams was the right move. I think. That's key. That is key. Okay, it's Devontae Adams. Yeah, he's older too, but they have that connection. They know each other's game. I think that's yeah. that's huge. I think they needed that. I definitely agree with the signing or of Devontae Adams, that receiving core. Like I feel like you look at on paper, you're like Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, Alan Lazard. Like you look at these receivers and you're like, oh yeah, they're really, really good. And I think Garrett Wilson's been playing um particularly well. But I think overall, I think that Mike Williams, Alan's are like I think there's just been some drop passes that yeah. are definitely um not oh, what definitely. you want to see out of an NFL receiving core. And I think yeah. Devontae Adams, you know, the dynamic duo that's coming back. I mean, they were elite in Green Bay. I think I think that they will be elite later on down. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, big game this week. I'm I'm feeling pretty good, honestly. I think getting Devontae Adams, I think everything is starting to kind of click. But this game is really pivotal because if you lose it, you're gonna be two and five. You can really only lose two maybe three games and be on the edge but I think you gotta really get this win and start making that move forward yep I definitely agree uh moving on to Browns versus Eagles um overall I think that Deshaun Watson I think we're saying the same thing every week I think Deshaun Watson should be benched yeah I, he's not playing well I don't think he deserves to even have a starting job when it's like funny when you look at it, you're like someone like Justin Fields is playing well and he's still getting benched like how yeah and I think this is a move for the Browns. Like you've got to do it like sooner than later because you wait too long and then it's you know, season's done. You already have too many losses to make a wild card game. So I think if you are, you got to do it like now. Yeah, I think the signing of Deshaun Watson in general just put them in a bad spot. I mean, you're giving up so many draft picks and honestly so much like money that it was all guaranteed on the line. Like, what is he like fighting for at this point? Yeah. Well, on the other side of the ball, I mean, A.J. Brown, he had a great game. He had only six catches, but for 160, 116 yards, um, one touchdown. You know, I think the Eagles are looking good. They have those key players. So, I think if they just kind of keep going, they'll, they'll be good. Yeah, I agree. Also, I think the Browns are they're starting to realize that, you know, they're last in the division, they're not playing well, and Amari Cooper has been shipped off to Buffalo. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm not too worried about it. We'll, we'll meet Buffalo again. Um, in Buffalo this time though, so that's not going to be the best. But uh, I think you know, it's it's good. They need uh, more options besides you know, Kin Kincaid or whatever. You know, like yeah, you I need know. more people losing stuff on digs was obviously huge, but they still they need some guys. Yeah, I think Josh Allen is already a great quarterback. I think it's shown that like he can work with whoever his receivers are. But I think this is really what it's going to you know make this team maybe have a drive and make yeah. the playoffs, have a decent run versus before. A, Exactly, Kincaid, you know, the rookie, Keon Coleman. Like, they, he yeah. just needed more options, and I think this was definitely a really, really good move for them, especially with they're not paying Amari Cooper like anything because the Browns paid him off earlier. And they gave up, like, a third and a fifth round, which, you know, it's not great to give up draft picks, but it's not, like, a first or second, so I think yeah. they're going to be okay. Yeah. Well, sorry about your guys' loss. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of bad. Both of our teams sitting at 2-4 and four now. Yeah. That was – Saints versus Buccaneers. Overall, with a rookie quarterback coming in, Spencer Rattler, first game. I mean, 27 points is not horrible. Like first half, that is not bad at all. I mean, the whole entire game. That's not. That's that's good. And I don't think they played well particularly. I think Alvin Kamara had a really really off game. But I also think that if you're the Buccaneers and you have a you know you have a rookie quarterback starting, like you're gonna expect more of a run first offense than a passing. And I still think it's mm -hmm. even though Spencer Rattler went 22 for 40, 243 yards, one touchdown. I think it's still good. That Dennis Allen let him get, you know, the ball mm -hmm. out and uh, actually throw the ball. Yeah, I think your guys' defense just absolutely, like, high, 51 points. I mean, clearly the Bucks they have something, though, because they've been this explosive for the past couple of weeks. But 
51 points is a little absurd. So I think you got to really like look into that and figure the issues out that they have. But I think if you're Spencer Rattler, like you played good, you know, first game, I think first half he played really well. And then second half, you kind of started to see the mistakes him second guessing, you know, throwing the ball where he shouldn't be throwing it, you know, but he'll, he'll learn, I think. Yeah, I think he will too. I think the Buccaneers basically just adjusted at halftime and, you know, made the adjustments to his play. Baker Mayfield, I think, you know, he played pretty well, 24 for 36, 325 yards, four touchdowns. Yeah. He's been playing lights He's out. He's been playing lights out. I mean, with Mike Evans, Chris Goblin, like Chris Goblin had a game. Yeah. He had so many catches and just getting open, like making room. I think he, he played really, really well. Yeah. yeah, I think next week, you know, for your Saints, it's going to be a good test. You got the Broncos, Thursday night football. So I think from there, you'll kind of see where your team's at. Yeah, they got a matchup against our old coach, Sean Payton. Yeah. Which will definitely be interesting. I think that'll be, obviously, what you just said. Like, I think that'll be a really, really good game and test for both of the, you know, young quarterbacks. Yeah. And honestly, younger teams in general. Yeah. All right. So that's it for episode five. I'm Maggie. I'm Ella. See you next week.